Welcome to Expert Perspectives, Shifting Paradigms, Emerging Treatments in Moderate to Severe Atopic Dermatitis. Now, let's join our expert faculty, Dr. David Bernstein and Dr. Amy Paller in this CME activity. Hi, welcome to this educational program, Shifting Paradigms, Emerging Treatments in Moderate to Severe Atopic Dermatitis. My name is David Bernstein. I'm professor of medicine, and my specialty is allergy and immunology, and I have a faculty appointment at the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine, and I'm sharing this program today with my colleague, Amy Paller. Hi, I am the professor and chair of dermatology and professor of pediatrics at Northwestern University, Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago, and I specialize in the care of children with atopic dermatitis. Today we're going to be covering several aspects about atopic dermatitis ranging from epidemiology to pathophysiology to the clinical assessment, medical management, prevention of flares, and also emerging therapies. Participants in this program should be able to examine the epidemiology and pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis and the relevance to the management of patients with atopic dermatitis integrate a proactive approach to long-term disease management in atopic dermatitis with a focus on prevention of flares, assessment of disease activity, and patient education. And finally, we hope that you'll be able to discuss the mechanisms, efficacy, and safety data for the emerging biologic therapies and which patients are likely to benefit. Uh, now we begin with a discussion of epidemiology of atopic dermatitis, and we'll begin by defining what is atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis is a chronic uh, paritic eczematous skin condition that affects adults and children, uh, particularly children, and often associated with uh, elevated uh, total IgE levels in the serum and a strong personal history of uh, A to P, be it uh, family history, of allergy uh, or personal history of uh, allergies, including food allergies, allergic rhinitis, and asthma. We would like to make the point that atopic dermatitis uh, in the medical literature, literature is often used synonymously with the term atopic eczema, and this is fine, although in the US, we like to use the term atopic dermatitis. I'd like to also emphasize, David, that, that the term eczema should really not be used uh, for atopic dermatitis. Eczema is a broad term that encompass, encompasses many eczematous disorders, uh, such as dyshydrotic eczema, numular eczema. And in fact, the ICD code for eczema is different from the one for atopic dermatitis. So we need to make sure that physicians, when coding for atopic dermatitis, use that specific code. In this day of electronic medical record, it's really going to be important as we use that yeah. to understand the epidemiology of the disease to get that coding right. Emily is our patient who is being seen for a six-month well-child visit. Uh, she presents with a rash. She has red cheeks, and she has uh, swelling, edema, and exudation on her face. And Emily uh, seems to have uh, dry skin, generalized dry skin, and itching all over which really makes it difficult for her to sleep at night, and parents really are concerned about this. Um, she is on no medications when we see her. Uh, there's a history suggestive of allergy to dairy products. She has intolerance to dairy products, and often this seems to aggravate her skin itching or her rash. Uh, both her dad and her mom have a strong history of uh, atopy, that is seasonal allergic rhinitis, during appropriate pollen seasons. And we look at her skin, and she has uh, eczema on her face. Her, her face is dry. Uh, and she also has eczematous involvement of her extensor surfaces of her joints. Let's talk a little bit about epidemiology of what Emily has, and that's atopic dermatitis. Uh, this occurs most frequently in children, but also affects adults. Uh, it has been estimated in some uh, studies to affect up to 25% of all children and in other studies, up to 7% of adults. The prevalence may be higher in women than men. The beginning, the onset of this disease, this condition, uh, most often begins between the ages of three and six months. 
uh, by the age of one, uh, those who are going to get atopic dermatitis, 60 percent will already have uh, had manifestations of the condition. And by the age of five, 85 to 90 percent will already have shown signs of atopic dermatitis. That varies by age as well. So when we look at children, about two-thirds have mild disease, about one-fourth have moderate, and, and less than 10 percent yeah. have severe disease. But what we know is that as we look at increasing age, we see greater severity of the disease. Now, certainly one of the important questions is, how long does it last, especially in those kids? There have been many studies with some very different results, but a recent analysis of 45 studies showed, first of all, that the children who developed atopic dermatitis by age two tend to have, have less persistent disease. Secondly, that 80% of the children with atopic dermatitis had disease resolution by eight years after diagnosis, and more than 95% within childhood. What it did show as well was that the later age of onset and the greater severity were associated with more persistent atopic dermatitis. Well, this is really useful information for Emily's parents to know about because the fact that Emily has developed this uh, problem at an early age would mean that she's likely to no longer have her atopic dermatitis by the time she turns eight, eight years. Yeah, absolutely. Now we know that atopic dermatitis in infancy often is associated with the later development in particular of, of asthma, allergic rhinitis, and conjunctivitis, and that's been called the atopic march. Yeah, the, uh, uh, we know that this is something that's been observed for many years, and uh, studies of uh, infants and prospective studies have really shown that those infants who develop atopic dermatitis between the ages of three and 18 months, um, certainly at a very early age, are very likely to develop other allergic conditions as they age, uh, even beyond uh, three years of age. Uh, recent studies seem to show that asthma developed uh, in about 10%, 11% of uh, children who had early onset uh, uh, atopic dermatitis and allergic rhinitis eventually developed in 22% of uh, these infants who had early onset disease. Food allergy uh, is also a common manifestation as these children age as is allergic conjunctivitis. And the numbers that you just showed actually were from a recent trial that we participated oh, okay. in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, interestingly, we're, we're lower than what's been traditionally in the literature. So I want to point out that that was interesting because in that trial, the children in both arms were treated very early on and uh, at the first sign of a flare, so that possibly that early intervention may be making a difference in the numbers. Very interesting. I think we need to emphasize also in talking about epidemiology that the quality of life is tremendously impacted, not only for the children, but also for their families. Uh, associated with the itching, is this decrease in sleep duration, an increase in quality of the sleep. That's not only for the children, but also for the family. Uh, one study showed that on average, parents get one to two hours less sleep mm. with a child who has atopic dermatitis and sleep disruption. And one of the dangers is also co-sleeping. One of the easiest things for parents to do is to take that child into the bed, and that's not healthy behavior. We certainly discourage that. In general, there's less productivity, whether we're talking about issues with school and children or whether we're talking about adults and their jobs, and absenteeism from both of those activities. And there certainly also is psychological distress. Studies have shown an increase of depression, anxiety, even suicidal uh, ideation in this uh, set of patients. Now, the impact does vary over time. Uh, if we're talking about the young children, that huge effect has a big burden on the parents. Right. Parents are exhausted. Uh, and in fact, not only can there be psychiatric issues in parents, particularly anxiety and depression again, but also an impaired parental to child attachment. Mm -hmm. At three to 10 years of age, then we're talking about kids getting into school and preschool. Now we're seeing teasing, mm -hmm. bullying, mm -hmm. 
Avoidance of social interactions, avoidance of sports as well, because that can make the atopic dermatitis more uncomfortable. And then finally, when we get to the older children and the adults, we see that low self-esteem from years of having issues with interactions with others and worried about themselves. So as physicians, we can have a huge impact if we can successfully manage these children with atopic dermatitis that seems to be impacting their quality of life and all these other uh, functions that you just mentioned. Yeah, and a yeah. lifelong impact because yeah. of the uh, improvement in their psychological yeah, state. Yeah, absolutely. From what we've discussed so far, uh, this is a, a considerable health problem. It affects a high proportion of children and, and some adults. And uh, we know that this condition, atopic dermatitis, is extremely common. And we also know that there are unmet needs in terms of managing uh, patients with atopic dermatitis. Uh, even in the adult population, recently a study published uh, seemed to indicate uh, then about 400 adults, uh, this was a big problem for adults who have this condition, um, moderate or severe atopic dermatitis, and uh, these uh, patients really suffered from daily itching, uh, many of them more than 18 hours a day, and sleep disturbance, uh, unable to get through the night, unable to have a restful sleep. So this is a major impact in adults as well in terms mm -hmm. of their quality of life. Absolutely. Now, we don't need to think not just about their quality of life, but also the impact on society. Yeah. Uh, there's much greater health care resource utilization, more provider visits, more emergency department visits, uh, greater risk of hospitalization. And the indirect costs are even greater than the direct costs. Time missed from work, child care issues, school issues. And if we go back to our uh, case, Emily, uh, Emily has uh, atopic dermatitis, she has problems with sleep, and this has had an effect on her school performance and her ability to interact with her peers, other children, and also has impacted her family. So uh, what happened to Emily is that she was managed well, and she responded very nicely in terms of uh, reducing her atopic dermatitis clinical manifestations. Uh, we're going to talk now about how you approach management of uh, somebody like Emily in future modules. And uh, this hopefully will uh, facilitate and enable uh, primary care physicians as well as specialists to, to, uh, to treat people like Emily.